Hello and welcome to our another episode. Uh, I again have uh, brother uh, Victor with me. He will be discussing today the miracle of Jesus that he performed, the very first miracle in Gospel of John when he made wine out of water. And it, it has deeper meaning in it, which he will expound. Welcome, brother Victor. Hey, thank you, Joe. Nice to be here. In God's word. Well, let's look at that uh, first miracle Lord Jesus did in the book of John, chapter 1, chapter 2, from verse 1 to 10. I'm not going to read that, but generally you folks can read it all the time, but I'll just expound on it and then you will see. It's just uh, there was a wedding and then the Lord turns the water into wine for they ran out on wine. This whole episode is like a, let's say, like a necklace consisting of beautiful pearls. And why not? Jesus is our bridegroom and we are his bride. So if the necklace given to the bride with consisting of beautiful pearls, hey. Okay, now let's start with that. This thing starts with on the third day. You see, it's 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 also this this particular sentence has a beautiful meaning in there too. See, Jesus died for us, was buried, and after three days and three nights, he rose from the dead. And he rose from the dead, he had saved us he had prepared for us to walk with him to heaven he had accomplished what he came for so let's say it's on the third day okay there was a and then it says in the region of galilee there's another meaning in galilee you see galilee was generally inhabited by Gentiles. It says in the Bible, Galilee of the Gentiles. Of course, there were some Jews too, but mostly because traders, merchants would come in the ships on the Sea of Galilee to trade. So that region was mostly Gentiles. Well, there's on a side lights. And then there was a wedding in that town, Jesus and his disciples were invited. Look at the beauty of it. Wedding is two people, they become one flesh. Jesus, God, made us, he became our bridegroom, he saved us from our fall, and we became one with him. So its occasion was beautiful, wedding. What happens is, it's a wedding in Gentile territory. People are having fun, having wine, drinking, dancing. It's, 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 it's a happy occasion. Everybody is having fun. It so happens, Mary, Mother of Jesus comes to and tells Jesus they have run out on wine. Just think about it, folks. There's a wedding. There's a family. There's a bridegroom. There's a family. Then there is a master who arranged the feast and the guests. They ran out on wine. And Mary comes to Jesus, say, hey, they have run out on wine. Just think about it, kind of a point to think about it. Well, what does Jesus say? Beautiful. He said, what is that to you? My time has not yet come. What? She asks him, they have run out on wine. And he says, my time has not come yet. Now, folks, you see, 
Mary comes to Jesus and says, they have run out of wine. Why did she come to Jesus? Because she knew something about Jesus. You see, let's create one scenario that Mary kind of recalled. When Jesus was a little kid, he had sisters, he had brothers, of course, Jude, James, you know, Bible tells us. So Mary recalled that there one time, it was like evening, say around 9 p.m., children are playing. Jesus was kind of combing his sister's hair, just he had seen his mother do. And Mary was preparing milk for children so they can drink and then go to sleep. Somehow she dropped the pot. Milk is spilled. There's no more milk. Oh, man, she says. Hey, Joseph, can you please come here? Look, I spilled the milk. What are we going to give it to you, our children, you know? Do me a favor. You know you have a friend on 7th Street, and he has a cow in his backyard, you know? Why don't you just go to him and see if he has extra milk? And Joseph says, oh, okay, I'll do that. He gets up, comes to the kitchen to get an empty pot. He sees a pot full of milk. Hey, Mary, what are you talking about, man? Look at, come here. There's so much milk in here. Mary looks at it. She said, what? She looks at him. And both turn on to look at Jesus, who's not even looking at them. He is busy combing his sister's hair. And children are playing, laughing. They look back at each other. They smile. And they go back to their work, doing things they were doing before. So you see, Mary was used to. Now you might, you folks might ask, oh, come on, how do you know? Bible doesn't say that. Of course, Bible doesn't say that. But Bible has said so many things later happened, which give us the glimpse of what the foundation was. You see, Jesus, when he was 12 years old, didn't he remain in the temple in Jerusalem when they went there for the feasts? What did he do in the temple? 12 years old. He taught. Who? Teachers. Preachers in the temple. Right? So Mary knew. He's a miracle maker. Folks, he was a miracle child, born of the Holy Spirit. Doesn't that give us a joy to know our Lord? That's what prompted Mary. Immediately she came, hey, Jesus, they are run out on wine. Knowing that what he's going to do. And turn around and then, okay, wine is on the way, guys. Just for a little joyful point to make. You know what this parable is trying to, this, this episode, or uh, this little story is trying to tell us, Jesus heard Mary say, Jesus, they have run out of joy. Because you see, in Bible, wine is a symbol of joy. So Jesus thought, she says, oh, they have run out on joy. Then Jesus say, what is that to you? My time has not yet come because Jesus has not yet paid the price for us. And he's not risen from the dead yet. He hasn't died yet. Once he dies, he rises from the red, dead. And then he provides us his joy because now we have eternal life in him. For he has paid our sins. Everything is done. It's all finished as Jesus said on the cross. But it hasn't been done yet. So Jesus says, my time has not yet come. Yet, Mary overlooks his statement and says to the servants, boys, do as he says. 
and walks away. And then Jesus says, oh, okay, she's talking about a physical wine, worldly wine. Oh, okay. There were six pots. Why were six pots there? Why not four, five, seven, eight? There's a meaning there too. Six is a number of a man. God created in Genesis the world, everything, atmosphere. And day by day, he created birds, fish of the sea, all the, everything. On the sixth day, he created man in his own image. In every day, his creation, God said, it's good, it's good, it's good. When he finished all creation on the sixth day, and he made a man in his own image. He said, it's very good. That very word was inserted in there. We were made. So this is just again, a side note. Six water parts. And we are made of pottery. You know that. God made us out of the dust. Dust we are. To the dust we shall turn down. Lord says, well. And there were six. So there were Six jars, Jesus tells the servants, fill them up to the water, fill them up with the water. Then servants filled the water. And Bible said, to the brim. Why was that brim word inserted in there? What is the meaning of brim? Brim is filled up to the brim. You put one more drop on it, that drop will drop down, complete, full. They filled it up to the brim. So you see, man, because it was six parts, man is filled with water. Now, what is the water? Water is a substance of cleansing, right? So man is filled up with the cleansing substance, which is water, to the brim. Bible always says that. Not a hoof left behind. Well, read in next verse, you will see. But Jesus also said that. Not a hair of your head will ever perish. And at the same time, Bible also says that even your hair are numbered. So God knows us complete. That's why the jars were filled up to brim. Well, then Jesus tells them, hey, go. Take it to the master of the feast. What they do is take it to the master of the feast. He drinks the water, wine. That was the water that was made wine. But he did not know. But you see, Bible says in the bracket, servants knew where it came from. Well, we'll talk about that servants a little later. So the master tastes it. He knew there's something there. What is this? He calls the bridegroom. Well, you see, again, he calls the bridegroom. He doesn't call his father, his mother, or anybody else. He calls the bridegroom. Bridegroom. And who is bridegroom in the spiritual life? Jesus Christ, right? Well, leave it on the side. And he tells the bridegroom, he says, look, generally, in this world, People always have occasions, ceremonies, and you know, what not. What they do, they give you good wine in the beginning. Once people are kind of drunk with it, now they are not in their senses anymore, then they kind of give them cheaper wine. But you, he tells the bridegroom, he tells the Jesus in his spiritual form, kept the best one till now. Now you see, this world, the master of the feast was talking about the world and he was from the world. This world gives you good things in the beginning to entice you. Well, let's say a bait has been given to you. So you taste it and it's good. And then they pull you and ensnare you into devils, this 
world, once you are entangled in it, then what happens? Afterwards, just like the bad wine, where do you go, sir, ma'am? Your end, to your perdition, to your destruction, right? That's what the world is. That's what the system of the world is. That's how our world operates. Beautiful day. And then the night comes. You see on earth, the day starts with the sunshine, right? Our day starts with the sunshine and ends up with the night. Whereas in Bible, the day starts in the evening. First is the darkness. And after that is light. It starts from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., then 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So the day starts from 6 p.m., ends up next day 6 p.m. So you see first is night, then is the day. Whereas in the world, first is the sunshine. And then when you're blinded, yes, blinded, entangled, lost, you end up in the darkness. And what is there in the darkness? Oh, I forgot. Well, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Whereas, what does God give us while we are in this world? Even tangled, even lost on our ways. God provided for us. He came. Nothing we could do by his own righteousness, by his own holiness. And he fulfilled that and came and took us down, brought us out from the snares of the devil, from this evil world. You see, master of the field did not know where the wine came from, but the servants knew, Bible says. What is God trying to tell us? When Jesus, Lord Jesus, died for our sins, he rose from the dead, he made his disciples. He gave them showed them the truth. Touch my hands, you see. Doesn't John say in John 1? We have seen him. We have touched him. We have handled him. We know that he died and he rose from the dead. We didn't know that, but they did. So that's what even this little miracle that Jesus did consists of. Those disciples were the ones Jesus said, go and preach the gospel. Go and give the joy to the world, to the uttermost ends of the world. It's beautiful, isn't it? Six parts, six days. Miracle happened on third day. Well, I think this was enough to explore. Folks, every time you hear, you read the Bible, Jesus clearly said, read it and heed it and write it down on the tablets of your heart. So you see, if you read any page, anywhere you want, willingly and surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. His spirit will guide you, will take you into the depths of it and you will be able to see far more dimensional miracles and better say glory of God. And you will enjoy while being on this earth. Being on this earth is what actually this water wine was about. While on earth, 
you will have your joy. You will have your wine, which is not from this world, which is from Lord, Holy Spirit. So please ponder on it. And then every page of the Bible, and you will see, it'll lift you up beyond your own imaginations. Folks, thank you very much again for joining us and listening to our session. So hopefully this session was a great blessing. If you guys have any question, please write them in the comment section. And Brother Victor and myself will be back again with more videos. All right. Thank you. God bless you, folks.